You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning at four o'clock in the middle of winter and in that pure and unfiltered darkness, you make your way into the living room and you light a candle and you sit there for a while and you think about what it is that you're about to do and you ask for as much guidance and strength from the Creator as possible and you return the gift one more time and you ask for that gift to be directed so that in some small way, maybe in some small measure, someone somewhere might find the calm and the assurance that you're seeking to bring to that page and then you start the long walk down the hallway to the place where you'll sit for hours alone in solitude and hope that the stories that live inside the curl of your knuckles can be coaxed outward one more time. And you sit there and you breathe and you hope and you dream and you close your eyes and you feel the essence of that gift radiating inside you. And you put your fingers on that keyboard and watch while they emerge out upon the screen. And you wait for that time when you know that that perfect sentence has just occurred. And there's a gladdening in your spirit when that happens. And you seek to write another one, just like it, to follow it across the page. And in my experience, that's the nature of a writer's life. That immaculate sense of solitude when there's just you and the language and the air and the universe and that gift that Creator downloaded you with free of charge <laughs> in an immaculate measure of grace to allow you to have evenings like this, to allow you sometimes to have people walk up to you and say, when I read your book, this changed my life. Aside from all awards and all honors, those moments are the most precious, I think, to writers everywhere and to me in particular. Because, you know, my formal education ended with grade nine and I've never been back, I've never taken a training course, I've never taken anything. The only thing that I've taken is the open opportunity that lay between the covers of a book. And I read and I read and I read and by sheer volume alone I found out what a good sentence was and how a strong paragraph is constructed and how a great narrative arc is carried through the course of a, a long and lengthy story. And at 60 years old here I am. And to be recognized at this level is really, really the high watermark of my life. And there are a ton of people to thank I've been doing this for 34 years in one way, shape, form, or another, and there are a lot of people to thank. Some of them are here tonight, Sheila Rogers, my friend and chosen sister. Um, Nick Pitt, who's been my friend for the longest time in my life, he's here. Bruce Westwood, who's head of my uh, literary agency that represents me. And a ton of people who are here, I can feel them all around me. Um, my mother, who gave me the gift of stories. Uh, my spiritual father, Jack Kakakaway, who was my elder and traditional teacher for a long, long time. And all of the people that I met as a journalist and as a writer who were openly willing to share their stories with me so that I could find out in one way or another how our humanity is lifted up by art our common humanity, lift it up to the universe so that we can proclaim ourselves as a human family and as brothers and sisters. My agent, John Pierce, my current publisher, McClellan and Stewart, and my editor, Ellen Seligman, and my partner, Yvette Lehman, who teaches me every day what courage and generosity of spirit is really all about. And for everyone everywhere who's ever picked up a book of mine and read it, and lent it <laughs> to someone else. Thank you. Thank you for spreading the word and to the award presenters. This is a really significant and profoundly touching, life-changing honor and I thank you incredibly much.